All right, in this last lesson, we're gonna look at some ratio analysis, specifically on receivables and how we can use this information to help us better understand um, whether or not we're efficiently collecting our receivables at the end of the day. So we're gonna be looking at the receivables turnover ratio, just as a reminder on ratio analysis. Ratio analysis is a great way to get a quick look at different aspects of a business financials. It also allows us to compare current results with the past results without this indication that we have more receivables this period versus last period, so it's hard to compare. If we turn it into a ratio or a percentage, it makes it a little bit better to compare the two, even if one year it grows and another year it shrinks. So we like ratio analysis because we can get that comparison that we normally can't do. And we can also do this with similar companies, and e even when those similar companies might be much bigger than us or much smaller than us, by having a ratio and using that ratio across all of the companies, we're able to kind of see where we are against those other companies. So that's why they're so useful um, in our analysis of a company's financial statement. So what about this receivable turnover? Well, receivable turnover, just like inventory, when products are sold on credit, cash is tied up not in the form of inventory, but credit. So we talked about the very beginning about receivables and how that when we extend credit to our customers, our cash life cycle is then stretched a little bit longer because now our cash is not only tied up with our inventory, it's now tied up with our customer who we have to wait for them to pay us. And so that's an important aspect. And because our cash is tied up there, we can't invest in our own businesses. We can't even invest in more inventory to put in our store. Now, the key to offering credit terms to our customers is being able to collect as soon as possible from them. The receivable turnover analysis does provide us an understanding of how fast we are collecting from our customers. Now, the way that we calculate receivable turnover is we're going to take net sales revenue and we're going to divide it by our average net receivables. So net sales revenue, which is after all discounts and all returns, we're going to divide that by our average net receivables. The average net receivables is basically beginning net receivables plus the ending receivables divided by two. So just like inventory, we're going to take the beginning plus the end and divide it by two to get that denominator here, the average net receivables. Now, how do we interpret these results? Well, when we do this calculation, this calculation tells us that the receivable turnover ratio tells us how many times in one year do we collect all of our receivables and on average. So this is just an average. Doesn't mean that this is what we're doing all the time. It means on average, this is how many times we're actually collecting our receivables. So we also need to think about what makes our receivable turnovers better. Well, what makes it better is that we want to see it the highest. So the higher the number when we look at this ratio, the better we're doing because we're collecting faster uh, than just one time a year because we don't want to calculate. We don't want to collect one time a year because that means that our cash is tied up for 365 days. Now, again, interpreting the results, we do need to look at industry data because different businesses are going to have different timelines and it's not fair to, uh, to compare, let's say, a manufacturer to a retailer because they're two different types of businesses. And for a manufacturer, they may have a longer collection period versus a retailer who wants cash up front from their customers. So it's okay that they have different amounts. We just need to compare them to the industry as a whole. Now let's take a look at an example here. We've got Best Buy. We've got their financial statement and we can calculate their receivable turnover. So what we need to look is for their net sales revenue. Their net sales revenue is here. 42, uh, 42 billion, 879 million. So we can take four, eight, uh, sorry, four, two, eight, seven, nine, and divide it by their average uh, receivable, net receivable. So we can see that their net receivable, it says net here, is 1015 and 1049. So the long calculation would be 1015 plus 1049 divided by two. So we would do that calculation first. When you do that, you should get something like 1032. So I don't have a lot of space here, but 42,879 divided by 1032 gives us 41. 
55. So what does that mean? That means that Best Buy collects a receivable on average 41.5 times per year. Now, if you're getting to the place where you're seeing similarities between this and inventory and what's next, well, there's a problem with the 41.55. The problem is just like inventory turnover ratio, it's hard to understand if you're not an account because what does 41.55 mean? I mean, it's just a number. So how do we help our managers understand what 41.55 is? Well, let's turn it into days, okay? So we can use ratio turnover ratio and turn it into information that managers will understand and they understand days. So we're gonna turn it into days to collect as a way to convey the same information. So to do that, we can calculate that by taking 365 and divided by the ratio turnover, sorry, the receivable turnover ratio. So what we just calculated, we'll take 365 divided by what we just calculated and we're turning it into days because managers understand days. So let's take a look at our same example here. We know that our receivable turnover was 41.55. We know the calculation for days to sell is 365 divided by our receivable turnover ratio. It says inventory, but it's receivable. 365 divided by our receivable turnover ratio. So when we do that math, 365 divided by 4155 equals 8.78 days. So on average, it takes Best Buy 8.78 days to collect their cash. Now, if you've ever been to a Best Buy, you're like, how does it eight? How is it eight point seven eight? I give them the cash up front, and then they've got their cash, so it should be zero. Well. If you really think about it, this also includes credit card sales and corporate sales. So they might have some corporate sales, which also creates this receivable, and then credit card sales. So when you swipe your credit card, they're not getting the money instantly. It takes them a little bit of time to get their money because the credit card processor has to process your credit card and then deposit that money into your into Best Buy's uh, bank account. So that takes a little bit of time. So when we look at this 8.78 days, although it's not quick, so that's a whole week. And honestly, as someone who has uh, swiped credit cards and uh, kind of use credit card uh, merchants, um, I know that the deposit usually is less than seven days. It's like two days. Um, so some would argue like, Usually it's two days, why is it 8.78? So we need to do a little bit of investigation on why it's so long. And maybe that's what the credit card, because they do so much volume, there's a lot of risk in it. Maybe it is 8.78 days. Whereas me, that's swiping credit cards and we're a small business, it might be two days because the risk is very low because it's just so little amount of money. I don't know. So if you know the answer, put. I don't know, just let me know. But 8.78 days. So again, we don't know if this is good or bad. We do need to figure out what the industry has as well as, you know, look at their terms. Now, if uh, this is, if their terms with their credit card companies that they process your credit card with say that they will pay within 10 days, then this is pretty good. That's in the 10 day window. If they say that they'll pay within five days, now I got to figure out if it's five days, why is this 8.78 days? What are we missing? Also, if this wasn't Best Buy and this was a manufacturer and they have 30 day terms and this comes out to 45 days, what it should be pointing out is that your customers are not paying within 30 days, they're paying within 45 days. Why are they paying in 45 days versus 30 days? And again, that's an average. So there's a lot more people that are not paying within 45 days. Do we need to do something in our, um, in our credit department to make sure that our credit department's actually collecting on time rather than just shifting their feet and you know collecting whenever they want. Well, if we tell them 30 days, they need to pay in 30 days. And if not, we're call on the phone calling them to getting our payment. So again, this can be a good indication from a management perspective, how better do we need to run our credit department, especially if we're telling customers, pay us in 30 days. And when we do this calculation, it's now 45 days. We've got a problem. Two weeks have gone by and customers are still not paying us. Why is that? Let's figure out the solution. Let's turn it from 45 days to under 30 days so that we have that capital two weeks early so that we can invest and buy inventory, more inventory for our business. So again, so many management decisions that we can make with this receivable turnover. Not enough time in this video to do that, but hope you have a great understanding of receivable turnover and the days to collect. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next section.
Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.